This is a debrief of task 5 from Sample Assessment 1 for Business Tax. Task 5 is about calculating chargeable gains and allowable losses in company disposal of shares. It's worth 9 marks and in our learning materials we provide you with loads of questions for you to practice so you can go over it again and again and again until you get it right and this should secure you a, a good nine marks for your assessment. Let's have a look at the information for this. Company E has the following transactions in the shares of Company F. So we can see we've got a table there with a variety of dates and then we see with the transactions we have some purchases, we have some other receipts of shares, it could be a bonus issue or a rights issue, but then notice at the end we sell some shares. We also pr are provided with indexation factors because when companies buy shares, when they work out their capital gains tax, remember we're going to be comparing the proceeds from selling the shares with the cost of those shares, but we're allowed to adjust the cost for inflation. So those indexation factors will allow us to increase those historical costs to take into account that the costs have been going up over time. So let's have a look at the requirements. So in part A, complete the share pool. The purchase on the 6th of January 2010 has already been included. So we can see in the table provided, there is the original purchase. And we need to show the balance of the shares carried forward and then show our answers to the nearest pound. And then notice a bit below that in part two, Calculate the chargeable gain or allowable loss on the disposal of the shares in the year ended 30th November 2024. Again, show your answers to the nearest pound. Remember that when we do our indexation, indexation cannot create a loss or make a loss bigger. So if we have that situation, we'd have to ignore the indexation. So the way to approach these questions is to work through the information chronologically. So we can see on the 6th of January, we purchased 6,000 shares at £3.60 each and that's been already included in the table. So we've got the 6,000 shares, we've got the original cost, and then we've also got the index cost. Now at the moment, these two numbers are exactly the same, but we'll see in a moment that they'll start to, to differ. Then the next transaction is on the 12th of March, there's a bonus issue. So what we'd recommend that you do is every time there's a transaction, do some indexation. So we can see we've got January 2010 to March 13, and we have the index for that. So January 10 to March 13. So what we can do in our table then is we can apply the indexation. So we take the cost of 21,600, we multiply by the index factor of 0 0.141, and that gives us an increase of 3,000 and 45 or with a bit of rounding 46 so then on the 12th of March we have a bonus issue three for one so let's remind ourselves what a bonus issue is this is a mechanism for the company to reward its shareholders and give some shares to them for free as it's a bonus issue the shareholders don't have to pay anything for it so instead of giving dividends instead of spending money and reducing cash the shareholders can receive something at no cost to the company. So we have a three for one bonus issue, which means for every one share we have now, we get another three for free. Now it tells us what the market value of those shares were immediately before the bonus issue, but that's not relevant for us because we're focusing in our table on the cost. Yeah, we're not thinking about the market value. So we can put that then on the 12th of March 2013, okay, we've got a bonus issue and it's three for one. So we get 18,000 shares. We pay nothing for them. This is still nothing, isn't it? 
So let's do some subtotals at this point. So we have a total of 24,000 pounds, 24,000 shares, for which we paid originally 21,600, which is the original cost. But with indexation, we have a cost of 24,646. Right, so let's go back to the table of information. So the next thing then is on the 15th of August 2018, we purchased some more shares. So again, what we need to do is before we deal with the transaction, let's apply some indexation. Now notice in our indexation tables, the second date we have is December 2017, because according to the tax legislation, that's as far as we can go for indexation. Yeah, anything since then, we don't worry about uh, inflating. So what we need to do then is use the second number, the 0 0.118, to deal with the indexation. So we have our 24,646, that, that's our subtotal we just calculated, and we multiply by 0 0.118, which is 2,908. So let's do some subtotals uh, to, to keep on track of what we're doing here. So we still have 24,000 shares with the original cost of 21,600. But now our index cost is 27,554. Okay, so now we can move on to the next transaction. So on the 15th of August, we purchased 4,000 shares for five pounds each. So we can put that now into our table. So 15th of August, 2018, we've got a purchase. It was 4,000 shares. They're five pounds each, so that's a total of 20,000. And then when we do our subtotal, so it tells us we have 28,000 shares for which we originally paid 41,600. But taking into account the inflation for most of the years, we have 47,554. Okay, next then, uh, we have another transaction but because these dates are after 2017, then we don't do any indexation here. Yeah, there's no need to do that now. It, but notice that these two dates are very close together. Yeah, 23rd of August, 29th of August. And there are special matching rules to apply. And remember that share matching rules for companies are different to those for individuals if you did this in personal tax. So disposals of shares owned by a company are matched against acquisitions of the same class of shares in the same company in the following order. So first of all, if we buy and sell some shares on the same day, then those need to be matched together. And then next, any acquisitions in the previous nine days need to be matched on a first in first out basis. And then after that matching, any shares in the pool. So we can see here then on the 23rd of August and 29th of August, so they're just six days apart, so we would apply the nine day matching rule. And the legislation says that no indexation allowance is available on shares matched under the previous nine days rule. Now, in this case, we wouldn't have indexation anyway because it's after 2017. But in your exam, it could be that the sales are happening before then. Okay, probably not, but we'll just be aware that if we're doing this nine day matching, we don't apply indexation, even if the nine days are in different months. So what we need to recognise then is that we purchased 1,000 shares on the 23rd of August and they need to be matched with 1,000 shares sold on the 29th of August. And so they'll be matched together and treated separately. So as far as our pool is concerned, we just need to deal with the remaining 2,000 shares. Okay, so let's put that into our table. 
So on the 29th of August, we have our disposal, but we're only going to dispose of the 2,000 shares that are unmatched. And then what we've got to do is work out, well, what was the original cost and what was the index cost for these? And we're going to do this on a proportional basis. So we're selling 2,000 of the 28,000 shares. So what we need to do is take 2,000, divide by 28,000, and then multiply by the original cost of 41,600. So that tells us that the original cost for these 2,000 shares would be 2,971. And then we need to do the same as well for the index cost. Again, we're just doing it on a proportional basis. So we're basically working out what was the average cost for those shares. But in this case, we're multiplying by the subtotal for the indexed cost of 47,554. So that gives us 3,397. Now the question did ask us to do subtotals as well. It was the carry forward balance. So our total we have at the end of all these transactions, we have a total of 26,000 shares. The original cost is 38,629. And our index cost is 44,157. Now, if you compare what we've got on the screen now with AAT suggested solution, there is a slight difference. And we have done this video differently on purpose so that if you had done it in the same way as us, then you can see that you, you weren't wrong. So in the AAT solution, instead of doing indexation in two jumps, they just use the final figure. So in our solution, we applied indexation from the original purchase through to 2013. And then we did more indexation from 2013 through to 2017. So we did our indexation in two steps and they provided us with the indexation factors to allow us to do that. But in the AAT suggested solution, they just combined these two together and they applied the indexation for January 2010 through to December 2017. So we, we can just check that these numbers are all, all okay. If you take 1.141 and multiply by 1.118, it gives us 1.276. So, so these two numbers applied together give us the, the, the third number. Okay, so that, that's just you know, compound interest working there. Okay, but because there's a slight rounding difference between these three numbers, it means that the answer in AAT suggested solution is slightly different to the answer we've provided. So the number we have here at the bottom is eight pounds different because of rounding and indexation. Okay. So if you follow the AAT solution, that that's fine. And if you've done it the way we've done it here, that's fine as well. Yeah, this answer is human marked uh, and therefore they can apply their judgment to, to give you your, the marks that you deserve. So in terms of the approach, we would recommend applying indexation immediately before any new transaction. That's typically the way that people will make the fewest mistakes. If you try to be clever and combine indexation factors together, then the risk is that you may not apply indexation to a particular transaction. So doing it step by step in the way we have is the safer way of doing it. Okay, so apply indexation every time there's a new transaction. And so we had our purchase, so indexation, bonus, indexation, purchase, and then once we're past 2017, we don't bother with indexation anymore. So 
what we need to do now is deal with our chargeable gain. So we need to start off with our proceeds. Like any capital gains question, we want our proceeds. So remember what we did here. We are selling 3,000 shares for £6.90 each. So we have our 3,000 shares. There's 6.90 each. So that's a total proceeds of 20,700. And then we have our cost, but we have two different costs for us to take into account. So we have our matched shares, because remember, we sold these shares, but we purchased some six days earlier so we need to apply the matching rules for that so what we're going to do then so for these 1000 shares we purchased yeah we purchased them at six pounds each so we have the 1000 match shares we bought them for six pounds each so that gives us a cost of six thousand pounds and then for the other 2000 shares so this is from the pool. So here's our further 2,000 shares. Let's just put minus numbers here to clarify what we're doing. Okay, these are disposals, aren't they? But for these pool shares, we're just going to take the figure that we've got over here, our index cost. So the 3397. So this gives us a gain. So if we take the 20,700 less the two costs, that gives us a gain of 11,303. But remember, indexation cannot increase a loss or create a loss. So that's not applicable in this case, but it's worth remembering because it may come up in your assessment.